Hello and welcome to my third video. I hope you have your coffee mug ready because we are going to pass the interview of Ansible. Yes, it has been optimized to pass the interview. So this lecture or video, it has two parts. The first part, we talk about just the theory, uh, what is the architecture, why we need Ansible and the challenges that they're coming up. There is a second part to it. We get our hands dirty with the completely uh, hands-on practice. So please follow me on that side also. Uh, I come uh, not prepared in there so that we can find out about the different things that we need in there. Let's build a database server. In our case, we are going to create a MS SQL server. Firstly, we need to add a SSD drive to boot the hard drive out of it. And we are going to connect it to our VM. That's pretty much easy if you're working with Azure. Then we are going to add the iSCSI drive to hold our data. So we are going to point our SQL server to put the data on this iSCSI drive. Then we are going to have another iSCSI drive that actually is getting the data as a backup in there, or probably it can hold our logs. Then we are going to configure MS SQL Server and on configurations in there to do the backups and to make sure that basically every, everything is going to be running smoothly. Uh, we are going to have a firewall because we cannot put any VM out in the world without taking care of its data. Configuring all of these things will take between two to five days. When I joined my company, uh, I got some logs from previous person that was in my place. And the guy was writing there that, okay, in installing MS SQL Server, it took me between five days to about two weeks. I was like, okay, probably a bit like buffed up, but generally it's a hard practice. So it's manageable by one person, especially when I burn cash and do almost nothing. Yes, again, like that's a nice animation. So challenge of a scale. Yes, so many servers that happens, believe me. So we are having 10 servers, 10 servers in here. And imagine that for each of them, we are going to spend two to five days or imagine just two days straight, like 20 days, like one month, one person, one month, like you're burning $12,000 on average for paying that guy and servers and everything just to configure them. Nah, that's not a good one. So we have Ansible plus Terraform. The Terraform side is a plus side. So uh, how they work together, we are going to learn that one. So you rock the interview. Here you see uh, an architecture that we have with Amazon. Uh, you can see here Terraform and Ansible that they are in here. But why we use Ansible and Terraform both together? So Terraform takes care of actually building the system, like building the system on the cloud, building that VM on the cloud, but it doesn't take care of configuring that VM on the cloud. So whatever it is outside of the VM, Terraform will take care of it. Doing the networking, Terraform will take care of it. And everything that is inside the VM, Ansible will take care of it. And these two, they are connecting together so that Terraform is like sharing the data of what systems have been built, what is the IP address in there, and Ansible is getting that one from their dynamic inventory or inventory and like pushing up the playbooks to that server. So you can see here infrastructure configuration is going one way to the system. Okay, let's go to the next one. And this one is for IBM. Yes, the cloud that nobody likes, especially me and many other people. Here we have Terraform again. It works with every cloud. Unfortunately, I wish they by coded the IBM, but anyway. So here it is Terraform. You have the Terraform, you have some resources in there, and it just configures the whole cloud in there, exactly like your AWS's cloud. And it's going to pass into your Ansible the images that it has been created. 
In here, Ansible, it reads from the playbook that you have created and it reads from this inventory. We call this inventory. Inventory is a place that it holds the data about these virtual servers, virtual machines, and all those ones. So here we have Ansible that is reading from these two and then SSHing to the virtual private network and then to the virtual machine or virtual server. That's this SSH symbol that you see in here. That's the difference between Ansible, Chef, Puppet, and every other configuration management platform. Ansible is the only platform that is push-based rather than pull-based. Let's go to the next slide so that we can see it in better clarification. So here we have Ansible. Ansible uh, is reading from the playbook. It has the host inventory, and then it's going to push the configuration to all of these VMs. So how other systems work, for example, chip. So we have a main chef server in here that actually has agents on each one of them. Let's go to the next slide. It has about, it talks about chef. Yes, that's the chef architecture. So we have chef workstation. It can workstation can be basically my laptop, your laptop, anybody's laptop workstation, if th anything like that, that basically you do the configurations in there. We have chef server that takes care of connecting those inventory of the configurations to the nodes. And we have chef nodes. Basically, these chef nodes, each of them, they are like VMs. And on each chef node, there is uh, one agent. So agent periodically pull is pulling data from chef server and like changing the configuration inside the VM. And that's how chef works. So the difference between chef, the main one is Chef has an agent that you should basically pre-set up on your VM and then connect to the server, big headache, and then your server connects there. VS, in the Ansible, what we have is that Ansible SSHs to the system so that, that basically system can be bare metal and then it SSHs in and brings up everything in there. But bare metal, I mean, it has OS. Like that's a minimum, eh? So here we have the chef server, it needs an agent. Big hassle, nobody wants to work with that one, so I don't like it. Even I don't like Ansible that much because we have better systems. The name is Kubernetes, but some companies, they work with Ansible, and yep, we accept it. Having said that, if you go to a company and you have some space to change, make sure that you go to Kubernetes and instead of Ansible, use some practice like GitOps and Helm. That's just suggested. Okay, so Ansible playbook, what it is? It's written in YAML. YAML is something like JSON and basically it's a file. File that you write things in it, like configurations in it, like data in it. And they say it's a better version of JSON People have mixed feelings about it, but at the end of the day, it's something better than writing your own code to deploy things in there. That happens, by the way, with Chef. So that's another thing that is differentiates Ansible with Chef. For Ans with Ansible, you can just go in with this YAML file. With Chef, yeah, you should read Ruby. What is the structure of Ansible play playbook? We have playbooks that has many plays inside and in each play we have different tasks. Let's bring up the terminal. Here it is. Let's go pretty rough. Installing Ansible Ubuntu. Yep. Docs Ansible, that's it. Okay. A lot of data, eh? Don't be afraid of that one. Let's see. Pretty much easy. Are available in here to configure PP on your machine. Okay, we don't need that one. Let's go ahead first from here. I highly suggest to log in to your Google account and like they have about $300 of worth of credits. You can use them for free. Uh, basically, I've created a SSH key in my system with this command SSH-keygen so how you can find about it, it's like this in here. 
connecting to in instances using third party tools we go inside and it's in here here it says that you should provide your public key to an instance we go in here it says creating a new ssh key you go in here and yep that's it just remember to put the username in here okay let's go to the previous page imagining that you have the ssh key you can do that let's let's do it one ourselves so we can create an instance still waiting okay instance 4 let's go in here select the image Ubuntu, I like it. And here we can allow the HTTP HTTPS traffic. We go here, we go in security. Here it is, enter your public SSH key. We have created one with this command. And now let's cat it. Let's copy the whole thing and put it in here. Figures out my username as in here and uh, i imagine everything is okay so let's create it yes we have it in here uh, instance 4 let's see if we can connect to it so ssh-i passing in our private our public key oh no sorry it's private key and then we go in it says do you want to accept the fingerprint yep ansible nginx playbook ubuntu okay it says that mkdir yep let's do it vim inventory dot yaml okay sudo pass do we have a sudo pass in there no we don't have any ansible user we assume it's going to be Summon GCP and sudo pass. We're going to assume that that's not going to be available. We have site, we have Nginx. Okay, Ansible dash playbook dash i inventory.yml nginx.yml. Yep seems good to me let's see we have problems ssh could not resolve host name okay what you can do maybe you can change that inventory file vim inventory file okay now let's go in here and change it ourselves nothing it's having ip usually okay I mean, this one should copy it. Yes, so no errors. Okay. Unreachable. I know why. Because of this one. If I change something like this, it should be something more. Yes, relax. Okay, it's recording. Permission denied. It's interesting why they have this semicolon afterwards. Okay. Really? Like we are doing it, like legit. Is it happening? Installing Nginx. Okay, so they want some kind of like rsync in the path. So let's find out what is the reason that we cannot have it. Oh, 
I need to install rsync even on my slide. Hmm, sync done. So let's go to these URLs again to see what they will show us. Yes, we did it. We did it. Okay, done. We are the champions. We are the champions. Okay. So we learned about what is Ansible, firstly. Then we got our hands dirty. Working with Ansible, we learned a bit. We fixed the problems. We learned how to also connect to VM on GCP. Anything else remaining? Also, we have this beautiful website showing here. I think we are done. Thank you. See you on the next one.